Hi, Tom from Fluval. Today we're at Safari Pet Centers in Brassard, Quebec. This is one impressive store, and we have with us Robert Mullen from Safari, who's going to give us some insight into these stores that he has. They're really something to visit. Robert? <laughs> yeah, our stores are a little unique in, in, the, in the concept. Uh, I felt that in 1997, when we fit the first Safari store, that we would do something that's not just a pet store, instant adventure. You bring your children here, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, our stores are adventure themed, so each store has a different story to it. Uh, Professor Green's the main character. You know, he goes from place to place searching for this rare bird, the TT bird as they call it. You know, so uh, we're in our flagship store, you know, and uh, the flagship store, where else can you go? In, I think, in the world and actually see a 120 foot long, fully, fully 1750 year pirate ship. Which we have right behind us here. You know, and you know, when you look at that, you know, and people come and say, well, why do we have a pirate ship? Well, Safari does things always a little different. You know, we have a full line store, and we have dogs, cats, birds, reptiles, everything that customer wants with experience, staff, knowledge, equipment behind the scenes is absolutely top notch. You know, we even do birthday parties where you can actually rent the whole pirate ship for a birthday party. Amazing. And that's very, very well, yeah. you know? So, in that sense is, you know, and what else would you have? We have a fully 15,000 gallon lagoon sitting where the pirate ship has to be. Because pirates yeah. don't, they didn't sail fresh water. They sailed in the ocean. So we had to put 15,000. We got Stingray swimming around. It's an amazing place to visit. Yeah. It, it truly is. And Robert, we're here today to talk about uh, setting up marine tanks and offering up some of our uh, viewers on fluvalaquatics.com some of the insights into setting up a marine tank and really how accessible it is to everybody. Oh, yeah. So why don't we head over there and uh, have a look and see some of the kits and the equipment you have for in doing the marine that. Section. In, in the marine, marine section. In the marine section. Well, yeah. hey, you want to swim or do we want to walk? Eh, I think we're going to walk. I don't have my wetsuit here today. Not a problem. Let's go take it on. All right. Rob, that was a walk from the moat over to this tank. Yeah. Well, we didn't swim. We could have. Good point. I would have been gassed if I would have had to have done that. So I guess it's a good thing we walked over. This is a 120 gallon reef tank we have right at the entrance here. It's an impressive tank. It's mature. It's grown in. This is the type of thing you want to see at home. Rob, Live Rock. Why don't you give us a few pointers about Live Rock and how important that is when you're setting up your tank? One of the most important things you can do is buy the best Live Rock you can. You know, it has to be cured. You know, you're looking at one to two pounds per gallon. This has 250 to 275 pounds of live rock in here. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you nickel and dime it and you buy that cheap rock, mm, you're going to start off from the problems. And when you have problems, that's all those nightmares we always hear about saltwater aquariums, especially reefs. It's because they don't buy the live rocks that, that people require. You know, the good, good quality live rock. So make sure when you buy it, in the store you're buying it, it's cured and ready to go. So there's no problems when you set up your tank. Thanks, that's good. Rob, this reef is obviously done really well, being a mature tank. It's about two years old, I think you mentioned. Uh, why don't you talk to me a little bit about setting it up? Like, is there anything you do when you set the rock up to make sure you have success? 100%. You know, one of the things that when you look at this tank very quickly is um, you won't see it. Going into your shop and talking to different people in the shop, they'll tell you. None of this rock actually touch touches the base of the aquarium. We've used little plastic uh, circles, uh, plastic things to, to balance it all off. It's not glued together. Some people will glue the rock together, but we don't. It's actually stacked very, very nicely so that you have all these crevices in behind. There's no solid area where, where you know, waste can collect or anything. And then there's an installant. You'll be actually, there's over 4,000 gallons of water movement behind this live rock. Wow. Very, very important. And there's no dead spots. And that's the key to eliminate that waste. If you have that waste, you have a problem with your tank. Yep. You know? Excellent points. We're in front of another amazing reef display here. Uh, we've got a protein skimmer, a Fluval C PS1 protein skimmer. You can see there's some waste in it. Robert, how important are protein skimmers in a reef setup? Protein skimmers are up there in the top five. You, you've got to have a really, really good protein skimmer. As you can see, this protein skimmer, without, without it, this is the fish's urine. That's what fishes, fish give off, especially saltwater fish. And you know, the beautiful fish behind you, swimming around in your urine all day wouldn't be that good. So you got to have a skimmer. You have to, and, and the better quality. This one here fits in a lot of smaller aquariums. It's absolutely perfect. You know, ocean currents are really powerful. I've always wondered, how important is water movement in a marine tank when you consider how strong the ocean is? It's powerful. Well, take a look. We're going to show you. 
there, this tank's kicking back in. We turned it off because it was loud. Right. So to give you an example, that's the kind of flow that's in a reef tank. This here, we're running about 2,000 gallons, which is actually running through the filter. In that tank alone, this is almost 400 gallons, we've got 9,000 gallons of water movement being done by power heads in behind. So you imagine these little fish saying they can, can't swim against that current. They absolutely love the current. And you must, again, one of those top five, you gotta have circulation in your aquarium. The more circulation, the better. Yeah, especially when you have this amount of structure. Really important. Totally and you can see, they love it. Look at it, moving, the corals are moving, they're being fed. Everybody's thing, there's no dead spots, and everything just goes really, really well when you have a lot of current. When we're talking about marine aquarium filtration, there are some of us that really think in terms of conventional filter media. Uh, Rob, what do you have to tell us about using a conventional type filter in a marine aquarium? There are some people out there that say, don't really need it. You know, but in in that sense, you gotta have it. You know, it's a plus and a minus. If you're going to do the maintenance on it, then you should have it. Cause you know, trapping some of that debris as we talked about with the skimmers and everything like that, you wanna remove it. Skimmer's gonna remove the urine but there's still some waste in there. Sometimes it gets trapped, algaes, dirts and whatever. Yep. So if we're gonna put that thing, there are people that won't, but I'm serious. If you're gonna use any kind of material to trap the, the waste, you gotta clean it. You know, clean it every week, clean it every day. I mean, that's how important it is, because in the ocean, there's no waste. There's no waste. Excellent points. Robert, thank you very much for having us down here. It was really a pleasure to visit the store. We learned a lot. We saw some beautiful displays, and I'm sure everybody appreciated it. Well, you know, next time, uh, bring the wetsuit. We'll go into the lagoon and swim with the sharks and the stingrays. <laughs> I, I didn't see sharks. Ah, they're there. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.